Hey Gooners, this is Alan Smith. This is Kevin Campbell. Lee Dixon. It's Colin Lewin. It's Gary Lewin. Charles Watts. Dan Potts. James Benj. Stanley. Tom from the Gooner Talk here. Ryan Ocross. Simon Collins. You may know me from the Evening Standard. You may know me from my time at Arsenal. You may know me from Arsenal or even the Hybrid Squad. My bird cat one's land. Being that physio set on the bench next to Arson with my rubber gloves on. The former Arsenal physio. The Emirates press box from writing, from Twitter. From goal.com, from Twitter, from YouTube. Football is the beautiful game and it brings us all together. Sometimes there are things even more important than wins and losses. And yes, even transfers. Every 30 seconds someone in this world gets diagnosed with blood cancer. The Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society works towards curing blood cancers and provide support to families currently dealing with these diseases. Gunas vs Cancer was started in 2017 by a lifelong Guna who lost his father to leukaemia way too young. Since 2017, Gunas v Cancer has raised over $75,000 for the Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society. And we need your help to keep the fundraising going in this year's campaign. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. No matter the size. And every donation enters you into the Guna raffle. We have a great chance to win amazing Arsenal prizes, including game tickets, stadium tours, signed men and women's shirts. And maybe a retro signed shirt by yours truly, Lee Dixon. Me, yours truly. Yours truly. Super kick out. So much more. It's easy to take part. Just go to www.gunasvcancer.com and donate directly to the charity. Pick the raffle prizes you want to enter to win and wait for the drawings at the end of the campaign. Again, that's www.gunasvcancer.com. We all know that victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. With your help, we'll be victorious against blood cancer once and for all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. Thank you for your support. Dave, good to see you, my friend. We've been talking a lot lately, but uh, but we haven't had the chance to to, to speak face to face that much. And, there's even, there's even, even an S of you now. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm trying, <laughs> trying. But uh, so so as I was saying before, you know, I. Part of what I was doing all the last last week or so is, you know, writing different segments and questions and stuff. And and so I'm just going to read my introduction for you. I'm not going to it's not going to be smooth. I'm not going to just move right into it. But uh, and and, you know, we were set to have another dynamic duo tonight, our third in a row to start off the show, um, you know, who much like Gab and Jules, who we had on originally grew up land in lands far, far away living separate lives until one day the universe brought them together to create magic. Unfortunately, we found out very late due to important circumstances beyond his control that half of, of the Dave and Jacob team wasn't able to join us tonight. We do want to wish the best to Jacob, AKA poorly drawn arsenal. And we will be seeing and hearing from him soon. And we'll be learning a lot about how during this hour, but joining us tonight is a man who's admired and beloved by gooners everywhere. He's a <laughs> prolific supporter an author writing both blogs and books about our beloved arsenal for at least the last 12 years to the delight of everyone with a copy. He's written on or for or with a number of blogs, including Gunnersphere, 1-0 down, 2-1 up, or as we now have from the Manchester United game, 2-1 down, 3-1 up. <laughs> uh, and currently, of course, Gunnerstown. Uh, his first book, Jordy Armstrong on the Wing, was published in 2014 followed up by supporting Arsenal as a funny old game in 2016. His fourth book was the very important Arsenal for everyone in 2022, but it's his third and his fifth books that brought him together with Jacob, AKA poorly drawn Arsenal as author and illustrator. First Arsenal's double double in 2018, 19, and now their brand new book from double double to invince a bubble. Welcome to the Gooners pod podathon, Mr. Dave Seeger. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what an introduction. You know more about me than I know about me. You know, it, it's funny because I just Gunnersphere, discovered that... Gunnersphere is a distant memory. Crikey, I don't know where you trolled that from. Well, That's you know, the, the internet, I learned about the internet last week and there's and, and there's information on there. It's almost like a super highway of information. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, 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 it's fantastic. You know, so, I, started, I, I literally was a reader of blogs like most Arsenal fans. And I was just reading a blog one day. It said, we're looking for writers. Are you interested? 
So I just sent an email off. This is 2011 to the guy who obviously runs Gunnersphere. Not that, you know, I, I didn't know who he was. I, I, and he just said, oh, send us a sample blog. So I sent it. And I, I even remember the article. I remember what I wrote about and everything. And he said, oh, that's great. Can we publish it? I said, yeah. He said, can you write all the time? I said, well, I work full time. I'll try. I write a bit. It was a bit of a tabloid site. I said, I'm, I'm not going to do, you know, on-demand stuff. But if I have an idea, I'll write about it. And people started saying, he said, are you on Twitter? I said, never heard of it. He said, well, you need to go on Twitter because that's how you promote your blogs. I said, OK. So I opened Good Day 66. And then after about five months, six months, I broke my leg. And I just started getting a bit of following on Twitter. So people were saying to me, you shouldn't be writing for that site. You should do your own thing. And I probably never would have got around to it if I hadn't broken my leg. And I was at home for seven weeks. My son sent me up my first blog, one nil down to one up. And the rest, as they say, it's history. It's history. <laughs> there you go. So even though Jacob isn't here, I do, you know, I do kind of want to spend a lot of the hour talking yeah. about your your book and your collaboration with him. And 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 frankly, Jacob is here in spirit tonight, and we'll hear from him uh, directly, indirectly ish, uh, uh, in just a little bit. Um, some quick <laughs> housekeeping, though. Uh, shout out to the chat. We've got 126 people in the chat right now. I would go through the names of everyone that's in the chat that's joined us, but we uh, we we've got the good fortune of having too many names to go through. But it's a lot of a lot of friends that we've known and seen for a long Evening, time. Ryan. Evening, Ryan. Yeah, and a lot of folks who uh, who we haven't seen before who we appreciate joining us for this. Um, go to GoonersVCancer.com right now if you can. Please learn more about the charity. Learn more about this podcast. Donate. Like and subscribe on on our YouTube page, and uh, and you'll be entered in the remaining prize drawings for uh, if you donate on GoonersVCancer.com. Uh, a quick update on the totals fundraised for this pod podathon week. We are now at $9,135 for the week. So we are getting dangerously close to the $10,000 mark, whereas podcast week last year was uh, we, we were just under $6,200. So it's a great sign of wow. growth. And, uh, and, and, and that brings us to almost $25,000 for the campaign that only started in the middle of July. So, um, Brilliant. so yes. Yeah. The, I mean, I'm, I'm tingling. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so we've got more prize draws going as well. And if you have a user question, something you want to ask of Dave it can be about anything about Arsenal, about his history, about the books, about the illustrated, uh, the collaboration with Jacob. You can, uh, you can add that if you like, that's, that's uh, the first edition of Geordie Armstrong, the winning sign by me, Bob Wilson and Jill Armstrong. Wow. That okay. Oh, okay. Well, that, that, uh, that will be something that we will give away. We'll, it's going to be a, a, uh, well, we're giving away a signed book at the end of this hour, so so uh, I'll add that to the list. But thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, just put yeah. it together. I haven't the, the new book has is arriving this week from the printers. I haven't even seen the, the physical item yet. So actually, that 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 book, if you remind me afterwards, that'll be added to our next raffle, the one that uh, that that we started in about a month or so, where where you can choose kind of which prizes you want to put your bids on and that sort of thing. So well, I'll bring it with me to New York. Beautiful. That's fantastic. Well, or or I'll pick it up from you in London, one way or the other. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So, um, how were you and Jacob brought together uh, back in 2019? I, I I I frankly, I mean, I I've known Jacob. I met him in person in 2022 last year at the Orlando tour. Uh, fell in love with the guy. By the way, uh, just a, an incredible guy. Uh, was lucky enough to see him again this summer and met his dad, who is hilarious you can see where he gets it from um uh, but uh i wasn't quite aware that back in 2018 he was out there and and he wasn't and, i mean i discovered him i discovered him mike so <laughs> i i, I <laughs> honestly, thought that... honestly i started writing the, i had this crazy idea about writing the book obviously in the start that i did you know in rhyming couplets describing the whole everything that happened in those two double seasons but in, in rhyming verse and in, in my head although it wasn't quite the same as Dr. Zeus, but it was that style. And I thought, yeah, I need I need illustrations that would match that. And he just, I think he just started on Twitter. And I didn't know him. I followed him. I, I said, can you follow me back so I can ask you a question? It was literally as simple as that. You know, I'd really, I said, look, how do you feel about this? And he said, I would love to do it. Because for him, I guess it was, 
you know, but then, you know, he's far bigger than I am now, but then he, he you know, he wasn't. So um, it was probably quite a good opportunity for him to, you know, to put his work out there at the time. And and it, and it was great for me because I needed exactly his style of illustration. It, it just fitted so perfectly. You know, the whole idea of having the Arsene Wenger, the first image he drew for me was the Arsene Wenger on the cover with the Dr. Zeus hat on, you know, you know, Arsene, you know, Arsene's, Arsene Wenger's magic, he wears a magic hat idea. And he did that. And I thought, wow, this is going to be great. And so that was it. You know, uh, it, it was that simple. Of course, he's gone on to much greater things than me. He's, you know, he works with Arsenal Vision, he works with Arsblog, you know, he's 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 out there with his newsletter and his his videos. He's just amazing. So it's a very yeah, talented, take, very take talented a, guy. Very take, talented guy. Uh, Jared, please put that back up. That Mark Mark's <laughs> just won the podcast so far, which is uh, Arsene Wenger discovered Jacob back in 2003, but decided against signing him. <laughs> 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 that is oh, that is the greatest. That's- um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's, you know, I, I, it's funny cause I, I could have asked, but I wanted to save it for the podcast because I, I really kind of thought Jacob was a 2021, 2022 kind of rising star in the whole social awareness thing. But so I was, I, I wondered whether you had, had discovered <laughs> that. Or, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, he's, Jacob has made his way into the chat brilliantly. And I don't know if we said it right off the bat. For those of you who don't know him or aren't as familiar with his work yet, he's on Twitter. I believe his handle's at Can't Draw Arsenal. Definitely worth a follow. He, he's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, these, these are these are the Twitter links, but we're going to put those up again at the end of the show. But I mean, as as good as his artwork is, as, as funny as his sense of humor is, he is an even better human being. Um, so since he's here, uh, in the chat at least, um, the uh, we, we, we do want to put one thing up, and that is, uh, and, and talk about your upcoming shows. Uh, then we'll kind of talk about the book itself, but you're doing some live events. I love a live mm-hmm. event. I love being at them. I love being in them. And these two live events, I will both be at one and in one. So uh, So I'm really thrilled about that. But if you haven't already seen this on the interwebs, um, is there something, Dave, you wanted to say something? Well, no, I, mean, I agree with you because, I mean, I've done book signings for every book, but I've never been involved in a live event. I've never been asked to be involved in a live event. So, I'm, you know, I'm not a big podcaster. So it, it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, and I, I'm very thoroughly looking forward to it. I mean, I haven't been to America for decades, um, and it really came out of the fact that Jacob said, well, if we do, if we if the, if the club does hook into this book and the club want to do something, I want to I want to come over for that. You know, And I said, well, okay, if you come over to England, I'll come up to America and we'll do something in America. And it started as a seed of a conversation, which is now spiraled into something quite, hopefully quite yeah. big. Thanks, thanks to, thanks to Curtis and the Arsenal, you know, Arsenal. Yes, uh, and, and that will be heavily public. Curtis is on the road this weekend celebrating his birthday, I think, but you know, Monday the news will go out, you know, via email, via the Arsenal New York website and everything. At the moment it's only been an Instagram tweet and it's been myself and Jake promoting. I'm hoping you know, it'll take off when when uh, the, the might of Arsenal New York City uh, <laughs> gets the information out in the public. Because I know I know you're cool, cool as a cucumber about the whole situation right now. So. No, I'm not. <laughs> I could think thing is because Jacob's unavailable this weekend. He he knows he's he's sitting there thinking Dave's desperate to know how many people have booked because it's obviously all got. He's organised the event, bright booking, and I have no idea how many people have booked, and he knows exactly how many people have booked. And he's 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 annoying. He's he's, he's loving the fact that I don't know. Any there, there'll just be there'll be just be a number <laughs> that shows up in the chat. I think anytime now. Uh, pretty no, if soon. it's small, I don't want to see it in the chat. <laughs> okay. All right. Three so uh, <laughs> let, let's let's hear from the man himself from his uh, from his major announcement earlier this week. Hello, I'm Jacob. I'm the man behind Poorly Drawn Arsenal. And you're probably thinking, Hey, why is this guy here? Where's that walrus fellow? Give me the walrus. All great questions. I'm here because I have an announcement. I'm going to London. So, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm also going to New York. Sorry, that's that's not the announcement. The announcement is that I, I, I illustrated a book. I illustrated a book with this guy, Dave Seeger, who also wrote all these books. The book is available for pre-sale now, and the reviews are rolling in. Andrew of Arsblog said, oh, fuck. Oh, wait, you know what? That is not the right quote. He said, a fun look back at Arsenal's most historic season, the 2003-04 season revisited with rhymes and fantastic artwork. And Amy Lawrence of It's Amy Frickin' Lawrence said, the Invincibles, 
As you've never seen them before, through art, poetry, and a light humorous touch, this is a wonderful alternative tale of Arsenal's greatness. So why am I making this video? <laughs> Another great question that you asked me, because Dave and I are going on tour. We'll be in New York on October 7th at the ground watching some Arsenal, discussing some Arsenal, and signing some books. We'll also be in London on October 28th. That's the 28th of October for you fancy people. Signing some books after the Sheffield United match at the Armory. Super fancy. We really would love to meet you all. I, I come across as shy and I worry that makes me seem unapproachable, but please approachable. I would really love to meet you all. Okay, more details in the descriptions below. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, oh, goodbye. <laughs> the two best yeah. parts of that. Well, the three. three I have one in mind. Go, you go first. The three best parts of that. The first one is it gave me a chance to go up and use the uh, the toilet. Um, the second, the second one. Look, I, I need every opportunity I can get. I don't want. The second one is Amy Lawrence of it's for Amy freaking <laughs> Lawrence, which is hilarious. And then please approachable. That's the um, one that got me. I, I seem unapproachable, but please approachable. If if you if if you want to know what Jacob is like in person. That please approachable is is the I mean there's nothing that isn't just like like sweet and and engaging and hilarious about that and his sense of humor is just it just is right down the middle of what I find funny. I thought you were going to say my floating head. The, the, the what? <laughs> my floating head. Just oh oh no, no I did actually want to ask you about that. Yeah. Why is your head disembodied? Uh, no according idea. to Jacob. I don't think that Jacob asked me anything. <laughs> he doesn't say, should I do it like this? There's no point. He's the talented one. So, uh, that was as much as I saw that. I saw that pretty much as everyone else saw it, to be honest. That's that's absolutely hilarious. So so let's talk a little bit more about the um, event. You kind of went into it uh, a little bit before we played the, the announcement, but this is um, this is the uh, the graphic, as we'll call it. Um, it is at the ground in New York city. I've never been there before. It's, it's really, really lower Manhattan, right? Like almost, uh, right at the bottom of the, uh, of the Island. And it's, uh, Saturday, October 7th at 3 PM. It goes until seven or eight or till whenever anyone decides that they're going to leave. Yeah. Um, and, uh, tell us kind of what the, what the schedule is for that day. Well, it, I, it, it's a, it's a moving feast, but if I, if I, if I, if I, We'll give it my best guess now. It will be um, Alexis Queros will be well opening the event with a welcome, a bit of stand up, welcoming you, me, Jacob, the guests. Then we're going to go into a film. Um, either the Invincibles, as in the one Arsenal did in 2015, or the Arsene Wenger one, depending on timings, not decided yet. But there'll be a let's watch something about this amazing team. And then there'll be the panel, which, panel, which you know, you know, some, some, some slim guy, you know. Um, so there'll be you hosting me, Jacob, and Alexis. Yeah, talking that's about the book, talking and talking about the Invincibles, you know, which obviously goes hand in hand with the book. And then obviously after that, probably a beer or two break, and then uh, Jacob and I will be signing and selling, hopefully, uh, multiple hundreds of copies of our book. <laughs> yes, I mean, um, I hope you're bringing a thousand in your suitcase. Uh, well, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I think this is the idea of, of uh, having the the booking, you know, to gain some commitment from people. And you can either just book to come to the event and buy the book on the night, or you can, you know, buy the book with your ticket, which is slightly deeper, actually. Um, so hopefully, I, I gather from the, the first wave of bookings, it's about half and half. So quite a lot of people are taking the opportunity to, to, to buy the ticket and the book. Yeah. Um, and this so, is the yeah. event, right? Um, uh, kind of repeating uh, what was what was on there. And if you go to, I mean, th this is going to be something you can access from either Dave or Jacob's Twitter handles, which we'll go over a little bit later in the show. Just in case, I think there was a little slight internet hiccup right when you first uh, started talking about the event. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to, to repeat in case anyone wasn't listening that uh, Alexis Guerreros, who is part of the uh, Soccer Cooligans, uh, which is a pretty Pod popular podcast over here he is a professional and a very very good professional comedian um and he also uh, CBS, that's the host as well, as well. yeah uh he hosts the galazzo show on on paramount plus which we see uh you know all week and during the european weeks uh as well so 
Uh, he's a really great get where you did a great job in, in uh, securing him with, with Curtis's help for the podcast. And uh, we're just, you know, really, really couldn't be more thrilled to be doing this show. And I'm very honored to be asked to uh, to be a part of it in DC, in, in, uh, in New York. And I think Christine Gupo, also from the same show, is going to be coming along to oh, add, some, add, uh, add some glamour. Um, she said she's very excited to come along. She's a massive gooner, apparently. So fantastic. So if you're she's a bonus, if you're in New York, if you if you're anywhere near New York, if you're from Boston, if you're from Philly, like like uh, like Jacob, if you're from you know, I'll be flying up from Florida to join you guys for the for the day and for the night, and then the next morning is the Man City game. And there will most certainly be a group viewing at one of uh, of New York's famous uh, pubs that uh, you know that support the Arsenal. Yeah, uh, I mean this this was Jake, Jacob and I took you know took that to Curtis's advice from Arsenal NYC that we'd be better to do it. You know, once we knew when the fixture was, you know, if it was on the Saturday, we would have done the event on the Sunday. But it's on the Sunday, we do the event on the Saturday, and also to get the event done so it finishes in theory early evening. Because people can then go and do their own thing, or they can stay drinking with me. That's entirely yeah. up to you. I mean, I I've been to New York. I'm fortunate enough to have been to New York a number of times. Saturday, the seventh of October. I don't need to be out at Times Square doing stuff. I just gonna I'm just gonna be where my gooner people are. Yeah. Um, and I have a feeling you'll want to. You know, if you're coming to the event, you'll want to do the same thing. So, um, so that's a great event. Please put your uh, your user questions and comments in uh, in in the chat now. Uh, some of the ones that we haven't uh, used from the previous hours we might get to if we have the time, but uh, New York's not the only place that you're having a show or that, or that you're not, that you're having an event. Uh, there's another one as well. And I was very, very excited to find out that it happens to be when completely coincidentally uh, my wife and I are going to be over there, but tell us about the, the second event. Well, I, this is all a bit, um, you know, there are, there are no details at the moment. All I, all I have from Arsenal, and you know, to be honest with you, I'm blessed here because Arsenal um, have been very, very good to me. Um, they don't stock a lot of books. They're not a, it's not a big item. You know, it's not a big uh, ticket thing for, for Arsenal. Um, but uh, the last event went well, obviously, because the last book was very much bigging up Arsenal's, you know, attitude and the way they work, uh, you know, with, with you know, fans of disability. You know, I did a lot for the club in that respect. So I think this is, they were very good to me then, but they've continued in the same vein. So I'm very lucky. Uh, but the detail at this stage is that it's after the Sheffield United game in the armory. Um, you know, I can't tell you who the surprise guests are going to be. I assume, you know, whoever they get or, or organise will be obviously Invincibles related. That's all I can say. I don't know who it's going to be. But it will be directly after the match. Uh, which is a Saturday three o'clock kickoff. So we're going to be talking about five o'clock in the armory on the 28th of October. That's all I can say at this stage, I think. Now, now will they be serving alcohol in the armory? Uh, no, no, this is very much, if it's anything like the last one, it's a case of one corner set up with, you buy the book at the till from somebody who's employed by the armory, then you come to have it signed by myself and Jacob and whoever the star guest or guest may be. And then you just, it's very organised. I mean, there was, I think we did 200 books in about an hour after the Newcastle game on Arsenal for everyone. Just a, a queue. People just queuing and chatting to buy the book. Shake hands. Last time it was Jack Wilshire and Per Mertesacker, you know, um, just buy the book. And then, so no, it's a, because obviously it, it, this is why it's the 28th of October rather than this month, you know, which it could have been because obviously Tottenham, it's probably the busy, busiest day of the armory for the whole season. So it was completely impractical. And then Man City the same. So that's why it's a little bit later um, because it had to be a game that's slightly quieter, shall we say, uh, for traffic-wise in the shop after the games. Well, it, it is the Sheffield United game. And based on what uh, some of the people have been answering in their four questions, we'll probably get the new manager bounce uh, for, for, for Sheffield United by that point, as we always seem to do. Why, um, someone just been sacked by Sheffield United? Well, we one of our questions is who who oh, yeah. we think oh. the first coach is going to be sacked. So it'll of oh, course be it'll be October twenty fifth that 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 the person <laughs> is sacked, and then the twenty eighth is the game. Uh, but uh, yeah, really looking forward to those. And and it is not a coincidence, nor is it lucky that Arsenal support your career and your writings because I mean it, it is completely well deserved. Arsenal for everyone is I mean. The concept and the and and the execution of that book is so so important and so special and so well thought of and and um, and so you know 
it really is an honor both to you know to to consider you a friend and also to see how the club that I love so much has embraced both you and starting last summer as well Jacob uh at the same time those videos of him with who was it granite and uh and I forget who the other person was mm -hmm. uh, I mean just I know it was a highlight for him but I mean it was just so fun for all of us to watch so yeah, well, obviously he's not, he, he's particularly excited because obviously he's been to New York lots of times. He's never been to the Emirates, so um, you know it's massive, massive for Jacob as well to come over, yeah. which is going to be fantastic. And he's bringing obviously his fiance as well, so. bringing Liz, and 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 I'll have Steph with me, and it'll be it'll just be a really, uh, really, really nice time. So um, let's get to some user questions uh, if we can. Yeah, I've got no, a actually. Yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mike. No, no, I just realized we, we've talked about the event, but we haven't really talked about the book so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and as long as we're here, we might as well, right? Yeah, I mean, let, 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 let's do that. So it, like you said before, it, it is kind of a, I mean, I, I thought of the cat in a hat kind of, uh, you know, Dr. Seuss type of, of thing. But, you know, you've written very serious about serious topics. And you've also written books that are that have interesting concepts. You spoke to comedians who are Arsenal fans. I mean, that, that that's just brilliant and unique and all that. Where did it come up to you? I mean, like to to do the rhyming thing and and I mean, um, it, it was it's was a bit something. of a family joke that I always used to do it. You know, like for kids' treasure hunts, Easter egg hunts, rhyming clues. I've always done it, and it's one of those things that it just comes easily to me you know if I had to do a reading for a family birthday it was always in rhyme and and it, almost to the fact that my family ridiculed me and uh, take the mick out of me about it but <laughs> I, I just think after the first two books one of the things about writing books is it isn't easy you know um, particularly when I don't think of myself as a particularly good writer I mean I have good ideas but it, it's it's not necessarily easy and one of the things that's really not easy is when you're a touch tight yeah you know, I'm a when I type, it's like this. So when, you know, when Jordy Armstrong is based on interviews with people he played with, people he coached, people he played against, then the comedians, it's long conversations, which I've got to synthesise into a chapter, which appears almost like a conversation, but isn't a I said, he said. The bit that's hard is transcribing. And you could people say, oh, you can get these great recordings and, you know, these things that record devices. It doesn't work. Unless you're in a sterile room with just two people, it really doesn't work. So for me, it's very, very long to type you know first of all type the interview and then then turn the interview into a chapter so the fun bit's the interview the writing the chapter's fun the middle bit is hard and long so when i when i came around to do the third book i wanted something that was fun and not long and it was just me chatting or to myself really <laughs> and that's why i came up with the idea i thought when i suggested to my publisher he'd say don't be ridiculous but i guess i'd earned a little bit of credit from the first two books and we did it um and i always intended to, to write the sequel probably very soon afterwards but obviously i had some sort of personal stuff going on in my family a bit of trauma and tragedy so i just <laughs> didn't do it um and it, in, a, in a way it now makes sense that i'm doing it you know on the 20th anniversary uh, but no the rhyming couplets thing is just something that i like doing and i find easy what's not easy is obviously not repeating yourself and, and describing football action in rhyming couplets you know so it's i should imagine i don't know anyone who's ever done it before or since to be honest and probably because it's a stupid idea but you know <laughs> well, there you go you're right about the timing working out to have it be on the 20 year anniversary of the invincible season just just kind of works out perfectly and seamlessly with everything you do yeah. and it tells you how difficult it is for aspiring writers out there that you have someone sitting here telling you it's extremely difficult for him to write. And this is someone who's about to publish their, I believe, fifth fifth, fifth book. So uh, to let you know just how talented these creatives are in the Arsenal community. Yeah, well, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of them in our community, I'll tell you that. I mean, there's some, there's, there's some very, very good writers in our community. And I don't, yeah. I'm not one of them. <laughs> there's some really talented guys out well, there. We have some it's great insane. writers. I mean, Je uh, sorry, Jared. The, I mean, the 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 level of creativity in this. I mean, people talk about the Arsenal fan base in such negative terms because they're referring to Twitter basically and and to the reactionary people who speak the loudest. But you know, we're having an Arsenal artist hour later with just three mm -hmm. of the literally dozens, if not hundreds, of creative people who create things to look at. And there's so many people who create amazing things to read and to and, and to listen to. I mean, I, I cannot imagine that this is the case in every other fan base. 
No. I mean, could Sheffield United seriously have the breadth and, and numbers of, of artists and authors and podcasters and and uh, comedians and humorists? I mean, it's really a special thing about this this support. Well, that, 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 that no one else could write the supporting Arsenal is a funny old game because virtually every comedian in the country supports Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I mean, you, ha you have to have a sense of humor to support this. And, and there are people that that I spoke to, you know, in my own book. You know, there's 16 comedians in that book. Jack Whitehall's not in it. Bob Beckett's not in it. You know, there are other fans that, that I couldn't get hold of at that time. You know, so there's probably 25. But I managed to get 16. You know, so, yeah, yeah, talent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. You I want to go back. You mentioned something about the rhyming was just something that you did with your family, and and it's kind of grown from that. When when I see a book like this, one thing that jumps out to me is it's it's a bit generational, and that people who have been fans of Arsenal for decades get to relive some of the happiest moments as an Arsenal fan and in a really fun way, especially yeah, with the yeah. artistry that Jacob brings. But also I feel like it's a great way for those same fans to bring their children into the Arsenal community. The, the drawings make it really fun. It's something that you could get children interested in as well. Was that an intent of the book to have it be something that is a little bit of a generational thing? Well, that can is, pass yeah, along? Good, 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 question. Out that way? Good, good question, Jared. With the, design and style of the book is made to look like a children's book one that's 100 percent the case that was definitely planned by myself and the publisher in the first book and obviously this is this is just the same style of book with, with a different color um but equally you know i i have not used a single naughty word in 90 odd pages uh, and that again is a conscious decision because i know from the first book that uh, people read it to their kids. I've got pictures of Arsenal fans sitting with young children reading Arsenal's double double. That's uh, brilliant. There's a really good, there's a really good, really good friend of mine in Paris, in France called Groover Blog. A uh, Groover Blog. I don't know if anyone yet, but but I've got a picture of him with his son. You know, with 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 the Arsenal's double double. Um, you, you, you're talking about Gro Grovesy? Yeah, Gro yeah. yeah. No, Gro 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 Groover Blog. His name is. Oh, oh okay. His name's that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. So no, absolutely um so yes it was conscious um and in fact there's even talk with the publisher about doing a, like a box you know like you get kids books in a box set so these it's even talk mm. for christmas maybe you know having both together in a box set um potentially uh, but yeah no very very much um that, that was the plan but every single detail of the season there's not a single facet of what happened in that season that's not in the book you know, so it's it's, it's funny. It's it, you know, it's a style that's not serious. But there's nothing missed, and the club have read the whole book from start to finish before they agreed to stock it and buy it mm -hmm. and publish and, and sell it. So, you know, you can't get you can't get the detail wrong, even though the style is <laughs> you know, a bit out there. <laughs> shall well, we say. Yeah, and, and it's a brilliant coming together coming together of all of those things and i think people are going to be really excited when they uh get a chance to read it and, and meet you and jacob both at the live events too is just sort of icing on the cake yeah, let's, let's not spoil the ending of the, let's not spoil the ending of the book though right yeah, don't want does to, it end with mike riley to know what happened yeah. <laughs> it doesn't end with mike riley right because then you, you would have had to put in some some unpleasant tell, words. Tell, tell, tell you the nice things about this book and for people to read it and i hope they get this i didn't i couldn't do this with double double but in what I did with this one, because of Arson's quote about the potential to go the, the season undefeated, and because of the ridicule and, and the media, you know, frenzy, if you like, when he said that in two thousand and, uh, and, uh, and three, it in this book as it progresses, although we all know, you know that they'd go over thirty, I, I'm able to bring in, you know, what the other teams were doing in relation to us, you know, what the media thought, was it possible? You know, and you're building that momentum all the time. And you can bring, although you're describing the games, you can also talk about the, where the position was in relation to the, the parvenus, of course, at the time were Chelsea or, the, or, the, the, or the, the normal rivals in Man United. So there's a lot more building this, you know, not suspense, as I say, because we all know what happens, but it's building the building it to a crescendo, if you like. Because uh, there's two, it, there's, almost, there's almost two, because obviously you win the title after 34 games and then you're invincible after 38. So there's almost two. Uh, well, know, and that's two the games. sign. That's a sign of a good piece because I mean I've I've watched the '89 film from Amy from Amy Friggin Lawrence, uh, <laughs> maybe twenty times, and every single time I get nervous. Yeah, I mean I I lived it 
as as it happened, I'd known about it for 35 years. I've watched the movie a hundred million times, and I still get nervous that Maybe. like Mickey's gonna miss the shot. And that's because the movie takes you into that yeah. emotion. And so have you got have you got Amy on tonight today at all? Amy, I I've obviously discussed it with Amy. She's uh she's got a house full of kids for a for a birthday party, so it uh, it that's just funny, didn't work on out. There, last Sunday, and because I, I sit in my block is um 31. I think you know that, Mike. So obviously all the yeah. radio and, and, and the press are in the back of my block. So I was walking out after we beat Man United 3-1. And Alex Crook, who's the chief talk, talk sport football correspondent, is a, I know him quite well. He's a mate. He's a massive United fan. Yeah. <laughs> and he's standing up there in the back row with his mic trying to describe the action. And I'm walking out going, Alex, Alex. And I completely <laughs> didn't realise that I was shouting over Amy. And Amy just... Sort of popped up in front of me from her seat and just gave me a massive hug and started jumping up and down with me as I was walking out. On that had to be that uh, had to be glorious. Every time yeah. I go to a game and sit on that on on that stand, I always pop into you know in between I guess thirty and thirty one to try to find Amy. And um, we're neighbors now, me and Amy. Yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, we'll we'll definitely be talking to her soon. But uh, she is literally Amy freaking Lawrence. So she's yeah. she's that special. Um, it's nice to get. You know, obviously that wasn't by, you know, that was by design. I asked Amy and Andrew to to give comments on the book because obviously they they both written brilliant books about the Invincibles. So to get to have them sort of say something nice about it was was quite personal and important to me. You know, thank good thank goodness they liked it. But uh, yeah, um, and those books are so, part of our Highbury Library uh, now at uh, atop a, a cabinet on uh, in our kitchen yeah. uh, in the North Bank. We we. And, and we're going to be adding to that, hopefully, with uh, with a book when we're back in October, a very special double-double book. Uh, well, invincible book. So, um, mm -hmm. all right, let's make sure we got time for, for some user questions here. Um, and... Yeah, there's a number of them coming in, so let's jump into those. <laughs> Disregarding the name, and, I, and I've met this guy. Th this guy showed up for Tom Canton's show uh, uh, in a t-shirt that he that he had made a few days earlier with a picture of him me and tom canton at the tollington the night of the emirates cup so four mm -hmm. days later he shows up in a t-shirt it is the first time i've ever seen my likeness on someone's t-shirt uh which was kind of hilarious but this guy is hilarious uh although this question is not hilarious how did you break your leg i literally fell over on a you know muddy slope running just you know running jogging fell over and it landed up you know fell awkwardly 99 times out of 100 it would just been a sprained ankle but i just wrenched the ligaments off the bottom of the tibia and it took a little bit of bone off you know when it when it wrenched off so i was in plaster for seven weeks a red and white plaster i hasten to add i was offered a choice of colors but uh... And yeah. it ended up being the catalyst for a successful writing career. So <laughs> always, a, started that way, yeah. always a silver lining. The next question here from a fantastically named guy named Jared Duggar. Jared and is, is, is a fantastic guy too, by the way. He's a, uh, he's a veteran. Do you know everybody, Mike? I, I, well, I know a lot of people here in the States. Jared, <laughs> Jared's from San Antonio. He is, uh, he represents. If, if you know anyone who's coming in the questions, he's from New York. Yes, I, 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 well, I've already to reached out to everybody that I know that's in New York. But Jared, uh, yeah, he, he's he's uh, he's representing our country in the military. And, uh, I think and that question is for you guys. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit of a fun question. Obviously, he says, "Would you rather fight one hundred duck-sized Katie McCabe's or one Richarlison?" I mean, I'll be happy to take this one just out of the sure punchability of I both faces i think richarlison is the obvious choice here that most every arsenal fan would love to have a go at yeah i'd yeah. rather kiss katie mccabe and punch richarlison, I think, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to turn into f mary kill in a second here but no the um the the question normally is 100 duck sized katie mccabe's or one katie mccabe sized duck but uh i think i think he's assuming that richarlison would be more punchable than a katie sized duck <laughs> um i mean a katie mccabe sized duck i think would be adorable um i'd be frightened so, a fight with Katie McCabe anyway, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. We got another one, Jared? Yeah, we'll move on to something that's kind of more serious. <laughs> as serious as we get on the Gooners pod. Uh, wow. From Peter Carlson. This is a good one. He says, Dave, are you worried that the new Invincible season we have embarked on right now is going to tank the sales for your book? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't be. A Trilogy. 
No. Yeah, actually, yeah, that that would be my next. Uh, that would be the third book, wouldn't it? No, absolutely. See, no, I was gonna, worried. I was gonna suggest a, like a book. I mean, because you know, since the Invincible season, it's been a little shaky. So you know, are you gonna do a book it's, about? It's interesting. It's interesting. You do a book about like, the Birmingham loss, to, you know, in the League Cup final, and you know, Kachel, some sort of rhyme about Kachelny and Chesney running into each other. Yeah, but also you you asked Clive and, and FK at the end of the last hour about you know whether they think Man City can go the season unbeaten, and the answer. Was they were both? They're not just saying because they don't want to say they don't want it to happen. They don't. They generally don't think it will, and nor do I. I don't think people, you know, realise how difficult it was. And when you actually go back writing a book like I have, because obviously, let's face it, I haven't got a twenty-year photographic memory. Although I was at a lot of the games, I don't remember every game. So I'm reading the match reports. I'm watching the videos, and we nearly lost a lot of games that season. You know, we we didn't win. We played badly, um, and that is that is one of the things that is. I put it in the program or something because it was an interview with me in the program. It, it is one of the things that is a comparable between this Arteta side and the Invincible side is that they, they don't they don't know when they're beaten, and and they will grind out a result. And we haven't had a team like that for a long time, a long time. Yeah, and we haven't an, had a team I'm, capable of grinding out results. Yeah, you're right about that, and it's an excellent excellent quality to have, and one that I think a lot of us over the last decade have been been pining for to see it yeah. come to the Emirates over the last season, season and a half has been yeah. a, a yeah. welcome change to what well, we have. Yeah, because we've gone because we've gone from having no leaders, one or two leaders in the team, to having five or six leaders in the team, and that that is it. Mm -hmm. You know, as well as the manager, but that is it. You know, you've got people on the pitch. You know, who you you've only got to watch. I mean, I did tweet off the game. Martin Odegaard has grown into that role. I mean, he is a skipper. You know, people thought Declan Rice was going to be coming and giving the armband. Odegaard is our skipper, and you watch him. Where I, you know, where I sit, Mike. I'm very close to the pitch. You see, you see him talking to Havertz. Anytime anybody makes a mistake or doesn't go their way, he's in their ear. He's encouraging them. He's cajoling them. As is Sinchenko. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of leaders in that pitch now, which we haven't had that for a long time. Yeah, and you can tell there was a directed, a directed point to be made in our recruitment that we were going to bring in those type of players, and it started back. You know, he's no longer with us now, but even Kieran Tierney was that type of player. And then you, as you said, Zinchenko, Odegaard, Rice, all of these are young players that are mature beyond their years, and you can tell that that's a quality that's important to the team and and something that's been wildly beneficial yeah. thus far. Yeah. Um, as we've, we've got about a quarter of the hour left, Mike, do you want to jump into some of the housekeeping stuff just to make sure we have time to get all that in with Dave? And then let's do one more user. Let's do one more user question because I am uh, I'm entering some of the, the the most recent donations into our randomizer. So if we, if we got one more user question to go, uh, then we'll be ready for that. Uh, we've got we've got plenty, some much more serious than others, as you would expect <laughs> on any podcast we're involved in. Uh, this one is just kind of a general Arsenal and Premier League question, but we haven't talked about it over the first couple of hours, so maybe we can get Dave's opinion on it. Oh, um, comes in. It seems to me that every week we're discussing something negative with the refs after every game. What can be done to improve the standard of PGMOL? It's really not my subject. I just, <laughs> I'm not like other Arsenal fans on this. You know, I know it's wrong, and, and I know there are problems, but they're the same problems for everyone. I'm not one of these conspirators who thinks some clubs get it more beneficial than others. I really am not. I never have been. Um, you know, some of the decisions are bad, but I'm still of the view with PGML, with VAR, you know, and whatever the system, it is the same for everyone. You know, we had errors pre-VAR, pre-PGML. We have errors after. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't try and get things changed and improve. And I think Howard Webb probably is going to be a positive influence over time, but it's just not my bag to talk about i'm sorry peeny weenie uh uh whatever it, was it peeny weenie <laughs> pretty, pretty close and, and and that is your bag that, that it, well, that's his bag to talk yeah, about. Um, yeah yeah i'm just not i'm not i'm not a great person for that question i'm sure that you'll have many people in the next 24 hours who will happily uh wax lyrical on referees oh, there's a line around the block of people who yeah. want to talk about officiating in the premier league as it's always a hot topic of conversation Let's, let's uh, hit me with, hit me with one up. more. I wanted to highlight it just because Demsek is somebody just a, a wonderful person. Mike and I had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with him at the Tollington after the Manchester United game back in the end of January. Just a, a wonderful guy. Really enjoyable to talk to him as an Arsenal fan. Uh, his question is, Dave, when you meet Mike, was he wearing his Gooners versus Cancer t-shirt? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think he's ever tagging off. To be honest, now I mean, I, I, the the question, the more interesting question, in reverse that, Dempsey, is does Mike actually wear any clothes that aren't Arsenal related? That's what I'd like to know. Has Mike got a shirt that is not an Arsenal shirt or an Arsenal t-shirt? He's looking I have, now. <laughs> I have, I have one. You know what? I, I, I have, I have three elements to my wardrobe. One is Arsenal, which is like ninety percent. And then my two kids' unis uh, are the other five, you know, ten percent combined oh. between the two. So I, I, I was pictured wearing a, a, and and if you don't know that this was is the name of a university, you'll you'll wonder why I was wearing this. But a James Madison T-shirt, uh, the the U.S. president in college, not the guy that plays for Spurs now. Um, and um, yeah, but that's that's pretty true. And by the way, I have like a whole closet full of these things and i washed them all last night so uh yes i've been wearing this a lot this week because i've been doing promotion for the podcast but uh but i used to, i used to have a yukon husky shirt in the late 80s mm -hmm. i had a lot okay. of husky shirts recently interesting yeah. fact okay. i had a mate yeah. who uh, came over to my university in, in LR last year from yukon and then three of us went out and, and traveled around actually last time i went to new york boston philly washington which we this guy and uh, yeah, so it was the Yukon Huskies, wasn't it? That was their, that's their team at that university. Mike, I'm always glad to hear you're supporting JMU and, and buying more gear from the bookstore. Exactly, because uh, we you've got a connection there. So let's uh, let's do the four questions real quick, and then we'll do the prize draw. So the four questions that I have for you, uh, David, are uh, okay. Dave. Sorry, I think my uh, mom calls me David, by the way. Yeah, and that's like with Michael and myself. Um, <laughs> I'm in trouble when when I when I hear Michael. Um, David, your big six. Uh, you know, in no particular order, who finishes in the top six? Any surprises in, in there for you? Um, I think Liverpool I think definitely back. Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City is the top three. Um, I think I think I think the surprise, if it is a surprise, is I think Brighton will finish in the top six. So I don't think Newcastle will. Um, I think I think Man United probably will get it together, uh, and I think Chelsea. So I think Brighton, if if there is a surprise these days, I'm not sure it is, but uh, right, yeah, so that Chelsea. would be my top six. So I think Tottenham yeah. nowhere near, and I think Newcastle will miss out as well. All right, great. So I think they'll who, be able to cope with European football. Who's your Belanda or winner? Who do you think wins? Uh, Messi wins. All right. He shouldn't. He will. Just because it's about stories. It's about yeah. It's the painting a picture and a story, and and for him to do what he did in that year to win the World Cup, you know, after after so many disappointments. Um, I know Har what Harlan's done, and uh, and I think he probably should win it, but I think Messi will. All right. And uh, first coach to get sacked in the Premier League this season. Um. Sadly, it would probably be the Luton coach. The Luton coach? I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but... Okay. Um, and a big surprise, kind of a surprise statement or something that's going to happen that, that that wouldn't seem obvious right now, but that you uh, think will occur in world football between now and the end of, you know, by uh, June, by the end of the, the season. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, God. Should I have known about this question beforehand? Uh, yeah, you know, I might, I might start mentioning these things at the beginning yeah. of the hour, and then, and then coming let back. Think, let, me think, let me think. 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 Tell you what. While while you're thinking about that, we'll One. do the prize draw. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, quick update: we have uh, now crossed nine thousand one hundred and sixty dollars and forty nine cents. The forty nine cents coming from the very Alamo City arsenal that contained david ziegler and jared duggar uh among others um and so a shout out to a few more donors we've got christopher manns from uh from virginia not far from me clayton maddox from greenwood indiana craig thornburn my buddy craig from fort lauderdale head of the fort lauderdale gooners um it's actually from lake worth where my in-laws live dale carriger from san francisco california Damien Chua from Jurong, I believe that is, um, I have to look that up, J-U-R-O-N-G, I, I think it's Malaysia, actually. Uh, Damon Gregg from Tucson, Arizona, Daniel Robert from, uh, from Hertfordshire, uh, Danny Ruck from Chicago, Illinois, 
Dapo Konu from Potter's Bar, England, and Darren Hopkins from Tadley. Um, is Tadley England or Ireland or Scotland? Uh, do you happen to know? I think it's England. I think it's England. All right, beautiful. And, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, well, my surprise is one of Pep or Klopp leaves at the end of the season. Okay. Mm. So, so Pep or Klopp, gone. I just, the, I just think, I just the, think the, way that Germany, the way that Germany are at the moment, I, I can't, I can't believe that the German Federation isn't going to come for Klopp um, at some point this season. And if Liverpool aren't doing what he hopes they're going to do, that's a possibility, I would say. It's an interesting question, and we have a user question that's related to that as well. Um, okay, so perfect. So now let's draw for this. The prize, of course, for this hour is a signed copy of. From Double Double, Double Bubble? Double Double to Invincible Bubble. Yes, Double Double to Invincible Bubble, a signed copy that will be your very own, signed by both Dave and poorly drawn Arsenal, Mr. Jacob. If, um, if, if you want it to be signed by Jacob as well, it's obviously going to have to be after the 7th of October. Yes, well, we, we generally, you know, we give away some amazing prizes here, but we don't give them away quickly. Yeah, uh, it takes time to fulfill some of these prizes, and some of them require, uh, you know, personalization and and and. and Obviously, we, we'll, we'll throw in the um, the limited edition calendar, which has got twelve illustrations from the book for a twenty twenty four calendar. So wow. was, the, the oh. cover of the book is the front cover, but then we've chosen between us, you know, January, February, most of them are from the month. The action is from the month. Some of them, for example, Vieira scoring the winning goal in in May. You know, some of the obvious ones, Benga like that in april but yeah so there's an image 12 images from the book on the calendar which we'll throw in as well i mean the prices keep getting better and better i mean there's the, the, you just can't there's no bargain out there like this podcast so all right so the winner of the book signed and the calendar thank you for your donation to the winner alram sundaresan thank you so much Syram. you have won the book we will uh determine how to get that to you and uh and and notify you after this let me find where my does it say is. which country he's based in uh yes i can find that out in a second he is based in and yeah it depends how much shipping i need to end up paying for this um Sirem Cinderism is based in San Diego, California. Yes. <laughs> now I feel like an ass for, for assuming that it might not have been San Diego, California. <laughs> uh, all right. So I mean I figured somewhere along the 27 hours I was gonna get canceled, but uh but yeah, I didn't realize it was be, it would be Dave that put me in that situation. So. <laughs> I was only asking in case it was easier for me to post it from England. That's all. Yeah, you know that 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 does come in handy with Ruth sometimes, and, and yeah, we uh, I, I appreciate the sentiment, but uh, maybe you know, I mean, if he cared that much about Arsenal and about you and about you know curing cancer, he'd come to the New York event himself and pick it up. Yeah, uh, that's all I got to say. So, um, so that's that for the third hour. Uh, ask the question. Few... Ask the question. Are you coming to New York and get people to put in the comments? Yeah, exactly. Me I mean, if, if <laughs> there's someone, if you put in the comments and text me a picture of your plane reservation, uh, <laughs> if, you're, if you're coming to New York, we want to hear about it because yeah. Dave is is uh, is very much looking forward to having yeah. a packed house as as am I in in New York. So, well, you're you're sleeping on my floor, I gather. So, so. Uh yeah, I'm not. It depends. Rick, my if Rick <laughs> ends up coming, we'll probably split a hotel room. So, uh, so we'll we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah, if if I do end up uh, crashing at your place, um, we will we will definitely um, release a uh, montage of our <laughs> of our yeah. experience. Well, it you don't go anywhere without filming yourself, Mike. So that's obvious. <laughs> um, you know. I, there's one place I go without filming myself. Um, I did want to answer one quick question here, Mike. Loki73 in the chat says, link to donate. Um, you can just go to www.goonersvcancer.com. Uh, the link is there. All the money goes directly to the Le Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And any donations you make today, uh, not only will you be into the big year in drawing, but you'll also be into these hourly drawings for the remaining 24 hours, if I'm yeah, right on that. They, they fly yeah. by. Yeah, we got 24 hours left. Um, well, Paul and, uh, and I donated last night from Gunnerstown, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, it's it's incredible. We've got 
I mean, the numbers of people that have donated, we've got uh, about 150 so far and, and the generosity, the size of the donations we have always said, and I, and I believe this and, and mean it, any donation matters. Every amount helps. It's all going to a great cause. Um, but it just, sometimes you get blown away at the generosity of people because this is far from the only charitable event far from you know in the arsenal world and it's tough it's tough for people at the moment it's mm -hmm. tough times one of the biggest years of fundraising that we had was during covid and i just i almost didn't run the charity that year because of the fact that i just knew people needed to do other things with their funds and and that it was going to be hard to really ask people to do it and i got encouraged to do it and i did it and and it was all virtual there was no you know in-person fundraising possible and and you know but again the the arsenal fan base is one of the most generous fan bases it, it, there's it, it's just it blows me away every time and what elliot and, and and andrew are able to do for the arsenal foundation with their yeah. i mean it, it, it's it you'd think that it's a zero-sum game you'd think that there is you know just a, a quantity of money and generosity that there is and the more options that there are the less each one would get but that's just not how it works uh, you know, people just, they really, we really support each other. So our next segment, ha it, it has a full house involved in it. So we're, we've got some of the folks backstage, uh, we're going to wait for the, for the rest of them to start showing up. But, um, uh, do we want to, uh, first of all, mention where everybody can be found, uh, and by everybody, I mean, Dave and Jacob, uh, on Twitter at Gooner Dave 66, the blog, uh, that, I wrote two articles for and then completely disappeared as my life got very complicated uh, is at Gunnerstown. But, you know, I appreciate that you don't give me a hard time about that, Dave. I haven't written for Gunnerstown for, for months because I was because of the book. So, yeah, can't yeah. give you a hard time. All right. Well, uh, and then, uh, of course, Jacob at Can't Draw Arsenal, which is actually kind of ironic because he can. <laughs> That's kind of the thing. I, I, it took me a while to figure it out, but 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 he can and he does, and we miss him and uh, and appreciate him popping his head into the chat earlier in the segment. So, um, so oh, David, Soph. yeah, I've talked to Soph about you. I think she likes you. <laughs> I mean, not like that, of course, but I mean, she's yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think she's a fan. I think I, I think she uh, she is she's in the pro Dave camp. Um, well, in that case, I expected to fly back from Cyprus on the seventh of October. You know, I I, I tried to tell her. A real like, friend I'm, would. I'm like, I'm a I'm a more proper gooner. I'm a more proper friend. Um, <laughs> Wait I'm, for the comment. Wait for the comment. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, but it is what it is. You know, we Cyprus. Can't, <laughs> we can't we can't get what, we can't get what we want every time. All right, Dave. With that, we're gonna we're gonna let you thank go. You. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate yeah. everything that you do, and and uh, and and including me in some of those things now is just an honor. So, uh, no, thank you. Anything else you want to say to, to the to the, well for the next twenty four hours? Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I was on with Perry last year, wasn't I? Uh, yes, you were uh, as well. And you know what? That reminds me something I wanted to mention. Kudos. To Perry, uh, support. He's recently come out with some comments about his personal life. I, I won't go any further, but if you've heard them, you've heard them. And uh, I'm really proud uh, of of what he's done. And 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 we're all behind you. Uh, is all I want to say. And um, and and could not be a nicer guy uh, and a more generous and a enjoyable guy to spend time with. And uh, and so I really you know appreciate what he's doing with himself. Absolutely. And I just want to say, Dave, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you. This is the first time we've got to speak. It, it was great. I look forward to uh, getting my copy of the book. Looking forward for the pre-sale. And Mike, as my first oh, leg yes. of the pot has run, <laughs> I will do you and you. And I hope very much you're still upright and going for the next time I come around. Yeah, Jared will be back. When are you coming back, Jared? Uh, we got you coming back. I have to look oh, at the schedule. Maybe tomorrow morning. It's it's one o'clock uh, UK time tomorrow with Charles Watts. Perfect. Um, so really, you're 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 basically the guy that we pull in to talk to the highly highly successful art uh, authors, the writers. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. So uh, Jared, thank you very much for riding along with me for the first three hours. Dave, love you. Jared, love you. See you soon. Take care, guys. Everybody. Good luck. Hey, Gooners. This is Alan Smith. 
This is Kevin Campbell. Lee Dixon. It's Colin Lewin. It's Gary Lewin. Charles Watts. Dan Potts. James Benj. Stanley. Tom from the Gunner Talk here. Ryan Oakhurst. Simon Collins. You may know me from the Evening Standard. You may know me from my time at Arsenal. You may know me from Arsenal or even the hybrid squad. I'm a bird cat one land. Being that physio set on the bench next to Arsenal with my rubber gloves on. The former Arsenal physio. The Emirates press box from writing, from Twitter. From goal.com, from Twitter, from YouTube. Football is the beautiful game and it brings us all together. Sometimes there are things even more important than wins and losses. And yes, even transfers. Every 30 seconds someone in this world gets diagnosed with blood cancer. The Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society works towards curing blood cancers and provide support to families currently dealing with these diseases. Gunas vs Cancer was started in 2017 by a lifelong Guna who lost his father to leukaemia way too young. Since 2017, Gunas v Cancer has raised over $75,000 for the Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society. And we need your help to keep the fundraising going in this year's campaign. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. No matter the size. And every donation enters you into the Guna raffle. We have a great chance to win amazing Arsenal prizes, including game tickets, stadium tours, signed men and women's shirts. And maybe a retro signed shirt by yours truly, Lee Dixon. Me, yours truly. Yours truly. Super kick -out. So much more. It's easy to take part. Just go to www.gunasvcancer.com and donate directly to the charity. Pick the raffle prizes you want to enter to win and wait for the drawings at the end of the campaign. Again, that's www.gunasvcancer.com. We all know that victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. With your help, we'll be victorious against blood cancer once and for all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. Thank you for your support.